people that, that to think that we're all st- stupid enough not to be free thinkers. Mm-hmm. And I hate that this like out like Jesus and the church is going to die again. Jesus is going to die all over again if they don't find a way to portray him the way he was historically known to be. Not the version of which y'all let Constantine and, the, and all these people come together and figure this out under the Constantine. I read the Constantine sword book about how this all came together. It's like when you look at that stuff, it's like if you look at the history facts of Jesus, which I think favor Christianity in this weird way. When you look at those, that dude is not the dude y'all have turned him into. Mm. Like, y'all have Americanized Jesus and used him as a way of not only propaganda, but you've weaponized God. Mm. You have weaponized God. You know what I mean? It's like that was the opposite of who Jesus was. The same people that you were you are like criticizing and going against are the only people that Jesus had a relationship with in the Bible. You know what the first miracle was in the Bible? Pop quiz. The first miracle talked about in the whole Bible. He turned water into wine for his mother at a wedding reception. Mm -hmm. If we judge that alone, regardless of how you feel about Jesus, if you believe in it or not, to the side, his mother comes up to him. So she knows he can do crazy shit, right? Because she walks up like, yo, I need a favor, <laughs> right? Imagine this, right? You know, and Jesus is like, and he calls her woman. He goes, what, woman? In the Bible. Shows me he's a little bit sassy, Yeah. right? You know what I mean? And she goes, in so many words, can we, I need a party trick here. Yeah. Like fucking, this is like a really whack party. Like She only talks to God when she needs a favor. Yeah, yeah she only talks to God when she needs a favor, yeah. right? She's like, yo, can you like... Do something about this. He says it's not my time, which leads me to believe that she's probably seen a resurrected squirrel or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? She knows he can do something. And she hits him with the pleas. And just like any other good son who loves his mom, turns water into wine. You're telling me this dude gives a fuck about gay people? Mm. Like, you're telling me that's what his focus was in life at that era? Like, that's something he'd be concerned with in this era of life? This dude fucking, first thing he did was a party favor. And then if you look at his history, he did nothing but protect town whores, prostitutes, people in jail. Like the famous story of the throwing stones, let he who without sin cast his first stone. He was protecting a prostitute. Mm. Pharisees come into the temple at one point and they ask him about an adult, an adulterer, dude having an affair, Mm. right? And that's when he does the... He says, uh, he said, in so many words, and I always, the Christians get so mad when I, fuck, fuck y'all anyways. And he's like, you know, he's like, so many words, he's like, hey man, you know, what about this girl over here? She's cheating on her husband. He goes, y'all ain't never fucked around on your girl? Literally, that's what he says in the Jesus way. He's like, you ain't never, you ain't never cheated on your bitch? Ever? And these dudes are like, well, he's like, then shut the fuck up. He never looked up from the dirt. It says in the scripture that he was drawing in the dirt. Doodling is what that relays down to. He was just fucking around in the dirt with a stick. Never even looked up at the Pharisees. He was just like, y'all motherfuckers, come on, dude. You're cheating on your girl, too. Leave that girl alone. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But then somebody like my wife's the first person I watch Christian women, Christian, those kind of Christian women, persecute. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, that's the opposite of what that dude was doing. So that's my problem with the church. It's like, even if we just go by the four books that y'all call the only four accounts of him, Y'all are, this dude ran around with 12 thugs. If he was here today, he'd be on a fucking Harley. He'd be going to a bar. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, I'll give you another one. You ready for this? He flipped a table over in the temple. You remember this story? And he said, don't make a merchant of my father's house. Yet every mega church in America sells CDs and books and fucking coffee. Yeah. There's Starbucks in these places. It's like, they're so picky and choosy. Yeah. The church is so like, well, hold on. It fits our agenda to really nail in on this one thing that was said in Leviticus, Mm -hmm. right? But we're going to, you know, it's like, I thought we were focused on Jesus anyways. If that's like the focal point here, I'm sorry I went on that. No, the reason I was asking you is if there's a, this is a weird comparison, but it feels like when you talk to God in your songs, it reminds me of DMX. Mm. When DMX would talk to God in his songs. Right. And maybe this is me projecting, but there's like, um, like a, I don't know if I'm worthy 
feel, like feeling I get from listening to it. And maybe that's me again projecting my own shit. But I've always I was curious listening to this and listening to Save Me and only talk to God when I need favor. Like, what is your relationship with God? Yeah. And I don't know if that's why it affects me so deeply. Maybe I feel that deep down. Right. But I, I've listened to DMX as a kid. Same thing. I feel now. Like I feel moved. Like man, I feel that way. Yeah. What's like to me? I'm just. It's more of a like I call it a sinner's prayer is what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. My music is just coming to terms with like. As a part of my recovery from the stuff that was killing me, which I don't talk about my recovery much because the recovering purists would say that I'm not sober and I shouldn't talk about it. And I respect those people so much. Right. The people that really almost like they can't live that way. But it's like for me, how I had to get off the codeine that was going to kill me, like mm. codeine was going to kill me mm-hmm. for sure. It took like me understanding the need for a higher power. Yep. Like for me personally, and I know it's not for everybody, but I needed to believe that there was something, because Jason, if he's solely in charge, I'm fucked. I'm yeah. in a lot of trouble here. Jason's, he's in a dark spot up here, man. That dude's, that dude's get really, really sad. But it's like believing in that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then looking at these people and being like, yo, do we not like, if what y'all are saying is God, what I'm reading feels a little different than like my prayer to God is like, yo, if you're who they say you are, is there a spot for motherfuckers like us with you or no? Because yeah. these people are sure making me feel like we're not, you know what I mean? You it's felt like, rejected by yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, you know, so it's like, talk to me, God. Like, are we cool? Yeah. You know what's up with me. Yeah. Like, you know my heart. But also the Bible also says that there will be plenty of people that will that he'll tell them, you think you know me, but you don't. Mm. And there will be people that, you know what I mean? It's like, it's so... I always joke that a lot of these pastors going to end up in hell, and I'm going to have a big old mansion with a smoking <laughs> section up there. You know what I'm saying? But I'll be the one with an open bar in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I think God going to do something big for me. I think that humans have a notoriously uh, horrible relationship with power. Mm. And uh, when you put people in power, usually shitty things happen. <laughs> well, the worst part of them comes out. Right. And I think that uh, a lot of times religion is used for nefarious intent. Mm. And uh, that doesn't mean that the ideals behind it or the intent that you were talking about, what those people are seeking in it, that salvation, that humility, that inspiration. Like, wow, what if I could be just 10% more like that Jesus guy? Right. What if I could be 15% more? I don't got to be him, but if I could just increase my kindness a little bit, if I could judge my neighbor a little bit less. like, And I think every time I've been in a church and I've felt that from the people in there, it was beautiful. it oftentimes wasn't necessarily what the pastor was saying, but it was the people submitting themselves that I found so profound. And I find that even when I go to concerts, as silly as that is, like seeing someone submit themselves